This is rule 7 and maybe even more. Yeah, hello and welcome back to the next episode of the self development with Tactics podcast. And I'm very happy to see you again here. Um, it took a little while until I just actually got to recording this. I don't know, I'm just somehow uh, messing up with my time management at the time a little bit. But that's okay, because I'm now here and I'm going to record the episode. But I just have to close the windows because you can hear everything. One minute. Or not even a minute because it's already happened. And yeah, uh, we are back with the 12 Rules of Life by uh, Jordan B. Peterson. And we actually are at Rule 7. And I guess there will be several, just more episodes of this summary but i guess and i I will um just do something else besides this so i will go through another one just uh from tomorrow on i think because because i don't know only the seven rules or 12 rules actually and some just millionaire interviews i guess isn't just the best thing um i think it could be better and i think it could be something you could learn more from and i can learn more from which is always better which is always better value is important value is definitely important but yeah i think i'm not gonna lose any time anymore and just go on with the actual summary yeah so the seventh rule is pursue what is meaningful and not what is expedient whatever expedient means let's see a politically no um of an action, convenient and practical, although possibly improper or immoral. Either side, either side could um, could break the agreement if it were expedient, expedient to do so. So it basically means that it's just easy, isn't it? Or doesn't it? It's just easy to do. It's just oh, my light went out. My light went out. I'm very sorry. I'm very, very sorry. Or without a light. So, <laughs> I'm very sorry. But something's in my room. Never mind. So, a pursue what is meaningful, what just means something for you. What the fuck is happening there? I think there's some fly or so in here. Yeah, I think it's not gonna bother me anymore. But yeah, <laughs> to actually start the fucking episode. Um, so suffering in life is inviolable. The universe can be unfair. In a hundred million years, nothing we do will likely matter. What does, uh, what does one do in the face of this? What does one do in the face of this knowledge? One responds to take the expedient path, indulge short-term pleasures, and put off long-term commitments. Do what feels the best today. Indulge your basest, basest desires all the time. Even lie, cheat and steal to get what you want. Do those things even if you know it makes your future self worse of your future self worse off than better. Of course, we know this is what we shouldn't be doing. We know we shouldn't be doing the hard things today to make our lives better in the future. We should suppress our immediate impulses to bring future rewards, like studying today and putting it off and putting off parting to become a medical student. One obstacle is our powerful biological instincts. They kept, they kept us alive in the Stone Age, but they are counterproductive today, um, which is quite something that I've been talking about um, relatively often, I'd say. Quite often, and it's, at my point of view, at least the same thing with fear. You know, Fear nowadays is just something that's often, often. I do not want to say all the time, because sometimes... You actually need your fear and it is also just somehow um, somehow important. And this is actually something that I've read today 
you know, while I was in the train, actually getting some stuff for the post, some new knowledge, some new information for the people outside there. So if you want to get all these posts, 10 a day, by the way, <laughs> nice rhyme, then just check out the link in the description if you're on a YouTube video or from or in the podcast description and or episode description if you're on the podcast. Uh, for my Instagram and or Twitter and or Facebook, whatever you like the most, I do basically post the same thing on every single platform so that you could choose and you can just see my stuff wherever you are um, to not actually, you know, being forced to just move to another platform only because there is my fucking stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, at my point of view, it's often the same thing with fear, as I started to say. <laughs> um, because often fear is just something that's quite unnecessary. You know, our body tries to just really... Uh, keep us alive first of all and really just tries to protect protect us from things that aren't actually somehow yeah relevant and or some things that our body just doesn't have to protect us from and this is then the point because nowadays there are no predators and there isn't much to be feared about and there isn't much that will kill you and want to kill you and whatsoever and so therefore the whole fears we're having whether it be about you know, talking to other people or doing something in public or whatsoever are just quite unnecessary. But I'm interested in what they say uh, as well. So years ago, help... Wait. But they are counterproductive today. And in brackets, overeating 100,000 years ago helped us survive a period of famine. Yeah, it's famine. Uh, today, it leads to obesity. But on a higher conscious level, it's hard to answer. But why? How do we define what's good and worth doing and what isn't? Uh, which is, at my point of view, a very, very hard question, you know. And it definitely comes up to you. You know, the thing is, why I'm doing what I'm doing right now? Why I'm doing it? You know, there are some reasons like, I want to help others. I want to create something for myself. I just like to do this. It's got a habit, so I'm not just thinking about it. And many more reasons and of factors and just options I could take. But um, but yeah, I guess he just... Or they... No, he. I'll just go with he because he, the author, uh, will just say something. So in 12 Rules for Life, Peterson tackles, uh, tackles it this way. It seems intuitive, intuit intuitively true that certain things can be defined as evil. Most abhorrently conscious human male malevolence. What even malevolence is? Is it a, something like violence, but from males? Oh, I see. No, it isn't. <laughs> um, Auschwitz, uh, mass shootings, enslavements, knowing torment, knowing torment of others. And these are all things most people believe are bad, even without having to read a philo philosophy book. You really like believe you likely believe the world is better off without these things happening if there is such a thing as evil then good must be the antithesis of evil good is whatever stops evil from happening and good elevates unnecessary pain and suffering in the most extreme so the elevates or whatever it is called is actually spelled a double l e v i a t e s so if i have pronounced it wrongly Oh, now I see. There is some thing. In why is he so heavily... Why? Is he always like this? It's just really fucking heavy. And the fans are just doing extreme shit. But I don't understand why. I really don't. And it's fucking loud. It is fucking loud. Let's quit. Just chrome for once. Actually, is it actually a little too... S yeah, I'll go with this one. Seems to be actually for raising kids. What the fuck? Put your house in order. Just everything way too big, maybe. But for some people who may have disabilities or who may just not... Uh, able to read this this quickly or you know whatsoever it might be even good so i'm just trying it and it just seemed for me to be like just a little bit too big 
just a little tiny bit. So there must be something like good. In the most extreme of cases, literally fighting evil is good, as typified in the Union's anti-slavery stance in the Civil War and the Allies' anti-Holocaust stance in the World War II. But all actions exist on a spectrum and resolving even little bits of bad or good. This could mean consoling, counseling is a consoling, counseling, it is C-O-U-N-S, E-L-I-N-G, a friend to get out of a bad situation. This could mean improving your own health so that you have more ability and time to do good. To do good. And this could mean empowering others to do good, even by helping people understand what good and evil is, like Peterson is doing. Doing good has meaning. When you act with meaning, you will attain more security and strength than uh, would be granted by a short-sighted concern for your own security. I guess what's in there is basically that you should just help other people, which is, and this is also something that I've actually read today, and which come, will come as opposed to tomorrow. So for all the people, I'm just spoiling you right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, it is actually the case that helping other people is actually making you feel good. And this also makes sense, you know, because... You know, quite everything in nature makes sense, especially if it's something like, yeah, how we are feeling, what we are feeling and whatsoever. And we like helping others and it just lets us feel so good because there's even a certain hormone, 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 or a certain chemical that actually gets exposed or just sent out or whatever it is actually called when you help other people. And why it's there? Because without this one, we would all have died in the Stone Age. We all would have, because nobody would just, you know, I think everybody would have just killed, you know, other people. And we wouldn't just, or we wouldn't have helped, you know, us. Like, we humans. We humans as a race, I guess, if you're willing. Is humanity a race? Is the human species a race? I don't fucking know. But, um, but I guess we would have all died. We really would, and, and this is something nature doesn't or didn't want to happen. Because, you know, this is also the same thing why just sex is just feeling so good, you know? It is just feeling good because nature wants us to survive and just have more of us. Which is the only quiet thing. And it also makes sense. Because, yeah, I think it just makes sense. <laughs> and actually, when we are helping others... Or, yes, we are, when we are helping others, there are actually four chemicals. Four chemicals come into play when we are just happy. The first thing is, uh, is dopamine. Dopamine, if I recall just correctly, is uh, the hormone that lets us feel good if we are going through physical pain or physical something. And this just lets us feel good after just going through some suffering, quote-unquote suffering, I don't want to say that you really have to suffer, but I think physical pain like, you know, exercise, even light exercising, like aerobic style shit or whatever it is, um, I'm not attacking you. If you're doing this, it's great. Every single form of physical activity is something that I deeply like uh, for people to do because I've mentioned it quite often that we all just are so, s yeah, uh, that we do not do much in terms of our physical just activities and whatsoever. And then it's always just nice to see that people are actually going for something. And um, so there's dopamine, then there's serotonin, then there is... Uh, uh, there are four. These were two. Serotonin, which is for... Like it's, it's an anti anti an, anti depressant or depressant depressant um of our body quite then there's something that makes us feel good when we are accomplishing something which may be dopamine endorphin is the one we are just going through physical pain and then it makes us happy then dopamine is the one when we accomplish something that makes us happy the serotonin is the one that makes us happy or that is just the antidepressant um, which is actually 
it seems it seems to be actually um, rooted in your gut. And this is also one of the reasons why you're not feeling great when you're hungry. You know, it's just the hangry thing, which is actually true, which is actually a thing that because, you know, these hormones or these chemicals or whatever they are, are somehow just in your gut. Maybe it's also because our body wants us to fucking eat so that we survive. Um, and then we're getting angry and more violent, which means that the, the chances are pretty high that we're killing something and then eating it. Would this make sense? You know, I, have, I haven't read it somewhere, but just thinking about it. I think this would even make sense. I think this would be, would be good even. Um, and there's one left. Serotonin. No, I, I'm going ahead because I do not want to just, you know, waste your time. And you could Google it, basically, and just want to just go ahead with this um, summary. So doing good has meaning, which is something I've read already. Uh, so what do, 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 do. So what uh, you do will matter to you. In turn, you'll feel better about your existence. And the evils and justices of the world are more tolerable because you know they can be overcome. Remember, Socrates, who believing... Uh, who, believing his principles to be right, retained the strength to speak true at his trial and accepted his death with resolve. If you're the type to bemoan your existence, Peterson argues doing good is the slave. By doing good, you are compensating for the sins of your existence and those of humankind. What are the sins? Are they... Yeah, I thought so. Uh, meaning is the ma mature substitute for expedience. Expedience rejects responsibility, it doesn't have the wisdom or sof sophistication to look ahead and plan carefully. It has no courage or sacrifice, it's the easy way out. Meaning regulates impulses and recognizes the value of making the world better. By providing deeper meaning, meaning gratifies all impulses. Ask yourself, how can I make the world a little better today? Aim up, pay attention and fix what you can fix. Like being a positive person and smiling a little bit more, just making a great day for other people, telling them a compliment, just telling them that what they're wearing is great and what is this fucking insect doing on my fucking wall. I, I do really hate killing insects. I really do. But sometimes I do not see any other way because if I'm not hitting it right now, I think I'm gonna do this after the episode. I'm really hoping that it is staying there and not moving anything else or anywhere else. Please stay. Please stay. Thank you. I think it's a great question. I think it totally is a great question to ask yourself. How could you do or how could you make the world a better place right now or at least today? And I guess you can do something. Whether it be, as I said, smiling a little bit more, telling people a compliment not being so negative and just being more positive and maybe even listen. Listen to the people and just hear and or listen to them what they have to say, you know. Uh, people like to talk. People like to especially talk about themselves and talk about shit they have experienced and whatever it will be, you know. And just by, by listening to them and just being a good listener and being generally interested in what they are even saying... At my point of view, you are then just already doing a great job at making the world a better place. Because you're just helping someone. You're giving more attention to someone. You're just making someone else happier on this planet. Very great that he picks that out. And um, it's also a thing that meaning is actually very, very, very important. Um, which is also something that I've pointed out by or at the, the really small summary of this rule which is quite uh, the first two episodes, I guess. So if you're really only interested in the rules and just a really quick informational thing that will take you one hour or two, then just go through the first two episodes of this summary. I hope you can find them. And and yeah, because there are just two... So these two episodes are basically little summaries of this summary. So basically the summary of those rules that are in this big one. So even more deeply, what is your true nature? What must you become knowing who you truly are? How can you make the world a lot better if only you made certain changes in my life? 
something valuable giving given up ensures future future not future future prosperity the greater the change you you want to make the greater the sacrifice might be which is totally true and which is also the thing with people who are just willing to get rich willing to get famous willing to get just very very successful there's always going to be some sacrifice whether it be time and i just really want to tell you it is time it is just really time consuming and emotional and physical power consuming to actually do something great and i'm hoping that i'm actually doing something great right now and i'm then i'm just somehow helping or at least able to help some people out there which would be my goal somehow which which would make me happy if somebody comes up to me and being like okay i've been listening to be, to your podcast and it really motivated motivated me or it just really gave me some um valuable knowledge that i needed this would be just fucking great for me this would really be and the greater the change you make or you want to make the greatest sacrifice might be inverting the question what is the greatest sacrifice you can make that that of what you love most and what good will come of it in so doing you change the structure of reality in your favor the above is my is his main point but in the chapter peterson describes two other topics which are the historical rise and fall of meaning and to really show you order and chaos which is actually somehow the title of the book even um the title of the book says something like something definitely about chaos and this is something that's true but i do not actually want to scroll up because uh, i'm not feared but i do not want to just lose this point <laughs> and just lose where I stop because this would as well just take a little bit more time off of um the time that i'm having so the historical rise and fall of meaning self sacrifice and delayed gratification have been part of human teachings for a long time and the discovery of its utility goes back even further i guess i i haven't actually completed the point that i wanted to make just before like about the meaning and in a real really small summary of this rule so of the seventh rule um i was talking about viktor frankl viktor frankl um and is actually an austrian scientist or he was an austrian scientist who survived auschwitz um which was a concentration camp in poland if you don't know and which is just insane it really is insane because it's such an yeah it was just a mis- machine that was killing people and he survived it through very very hard times and one of the main things that made him survive was meaning um there was some meaning in his life and if i'm recalling correctly his meaning was actually just uh writing the book that he actually started before uh before he came to the concentration camp and um all the scripts that he lost he actually wanted to um to really write them again and really publish the book and also one of the drives was uh the imagination imagination of his wife uh who unfortunately died through the second world war in the concentration camp yeah um so self sacrifice and delayed gratification have been part of human teachings for a long time and the discovery of its utility goes back even further a uh, picture in the stone age that a tribe brings down a mammoth and they engorge themselves until they can't possibly eat any more this after all promotes storing fat to help ride through rougher times of less plenty but then they have left over food they learn that they can go through the labor of preserving the food today for the benefit of having food tomorrow even better they can give this food to a neighbor to a neighboring tribe and expect a return of favor in the future a quick little note i guess of the author of this summary this only works works when existence and civilization is stable enough that the promise of future reward can be fulfilled um makes sense somehow you know even though i really just have to say you know if you're not getting anything back it's still great for the other people you know it is still great for them because they then have something to eat and they may have died without you and whatsoever so at the end it's just great for them it might not be great for you in the long term but you know the food would have just been rotten i guess if this is actually the right word i guess it is i don't know if i've used it actually correctly <laughs> but never mind i'm fucking care 
I know that you understand me. Um, but I guess so. I really guess so. You know, it, w it would just feel great if you are able to just, um, yeah, really help another tribe, even though you're not getting something in reward. But I have to say, okay, the food would just be gone anyway. So why wouldn't you? And this sacrificial behavior is promoted survival and they gradually became ritualized and dramatized um, customs inherited through generations and they became insured in the moral narratives and religious texts like the temptation of Christ, uh, wandering through the desert for 40 days and nights, uh, Satan tempts Jesus with a hedonism, uh, relieving hunger by creating his own bread, egoism, which is jumping off a peak and relying on God to save him, and materialism, r uh, ruling the kingdoms of earth. Jesus re rejects all these temptations of evil and immediate gratification, and gets immediate gratification. Instead, he reaches, or, and I see, instead he reaches for a higher goal of transcending desires to do good. Uh, in one interpretation, these temptations are different paths for Jesus to become a messiah by demonstrating supernatural powers. He can easily elevate physical hardships. He can relieve Roman oppressions by sizing the kingdoms. Jesus rejects these op options. He wants to undergo his trials without power that ordinary humans don't have, in effect becoming a practical role, uh, role model for humans. Instead of making bread for everyone, he typifies a mode of being that can forever solve the problem of hunger, rejection of immediate gratification, and a temptation of evil. Um, however, Christianity had a few weaknesses. It failed to sufficiently address the problem of suffering in the present day, which helped give rise to science and alchemy. Or alchemy. Uh, Jesus had already died to relieve all of his mankind's sins, thus uh, freeing people from personal moral obligation. The Protestants switch uh, to s s salvation through faith, not by work. This is meant partially as an expression of equality so that kings couldn't, couldn't lord their salvation over their subjects. However, this move devalued effort in this life since one couldn't earn salvation anyway. Uh, Nietzsche argues, which is one of the persons that uh, he actually had a great quote, I do not remember now, but it was actually also in the book. And I really liked it, I really deeply liked it. So Nietzsche, or however he's actually pronounced, it is N-I-E-T-Z-S-C-H-E. I used that human, humans killed God, and they would have, and they would have, they would have to invent their own values in the aftermath. However, ideologies like fascism and communism fill the void instead. In 12 Rules for Life, Peterson argues that the individual must be constrained and molded by disciplinary structure before she can act freely and competently. As secularism rose, a void in disciplinary structure grew. Filling it was nihilism and suspectability to new utopian ideas like fascism. Hence this book providing a reef rework structure for people to follow um yeah i don't know you know all these things like fascism and and uh, totally fascism fascism is it fascism yeah i don't know and and communism all these things they sound good especially communism it just sounds good you know you can't deny that actually um you know besides the fact that you know being average might not be or or everyone being equal and everyone therefore being average or super good and you know whatsoever it sounds lame you know it it's really sounds just quite boring and i understand that it didn't work because i wouldn't like to be like you know everybody else i, I wouldn't like to just be i don't know like you know like my neighbors or like every single 18 year old austrian there there is in school or whatsoever is so I understand it, why it didn't work, actually. Um, even though I do have to say it's, I think, not the only point why it, it didn't work out. So I guess there are a lot of things, even political things, and, you know, those those kind of stuff I'm, I'm, I'm not quite that uh, educated in. But, yeah. 
order and chaos, also potentially from rule 2. Chaos is unexplored territory, it is the things and situations we don't understand. Even, I do just have to address something, I do not know where I've read it, or where I've heard it, where I've quite, you know, if you're willing to say it, learned it, but um, the bigger you, your room are, the more chaos you could just, yeah, put into your room quite, you know, if you want to call it like this. So, which means that, you know, the bigger your room is, the uh, higher the chance that it's not tidied up quite. And it makes sense. I do not know where I've heard it. And it just totally makes sense. And it just came to my mind. And I just wanted to tell it to you. Because I felt like, you know, maybe it is somehow relevant. But I guess it's, it's not as relevant as I, as I thought it could be. <laughs> but it's totally okay, I guess. That's totally fucking okay. Um, it's where you go when you get fired, it's the threatening stranger on the street, and it's the scary audacious, uh, audacious, I think it's audacious goal you've wanted, it's also the realm of possibility and where new ideas come from. Order is explored territory, it's stability and structure. I see now, it is like, isn't it like a comfort zone, which is basically something a lot of people talk about. And which is, I think, and I guess it is just getting also one of the words that I just don't like, you know, uh, the same thing as, you know, influencers, even though it is somehow true and it does somehow make sense that people call, you know, these people influencers, uh, then also um, there was another one, another one, I think there was another one, um, uh, where did I stop? So order is explored territory, it's stability and structure, it's your plan for the next day, the comfort of, tra of tradition, the customs we use to treat each other, yet it also can mean con concentration camps, fascism and less extremely, so uh, less extremely, like fascism and concentration camps, I guess, and the lack of growth, which only makes sense for me, you know, if it's really a lack of growth, it somehow is... Yeah, it makes sense, you know, if you're just staying in your comfort zone all the time, it makes sense that you're not just exploring something else, whether it be just a new thought, which is the thing that they pointed out, that in the first thing, so the the, uh, the chaos, you're actually getting new ideas, which makes sense, because if you're viewing it as like the just uh, not comfort zone, whatever it be called, like, then there are ideas, and um, you will just get to new ideas and through maybe those ideas that, that might not be as good, you get to other ideas, you know, um, like in a lot of creative processes like mind mapping and, you know, oh, mind writing or whatever there is, there are so many things and uh, a lot do work. Um, but yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Some work, some not. I don't know how you're thinking about it. Um, but it makes sense. So we like being in order and we don't like when we are forced to leave order for chaos. Like when tragedy strikes, we are cheated on by our parents or by your partner, not parents, what the fuck, by your partner or you're fired. But order isn't enough. There are still vital things to be learned. And the ideal place is to be right in the middle, to have enough order to feel uh, teethered or teethered, T, it's T E. T H E R E D, but enough chaos to be challenged and learn new things, and this is where a meaning is to be found, which makes sense. It it totally makes sense for me, and then there are three five, five rules, left. Yeah, so we are quite. I think we have done like. Maybe two. Yeah, seventy five percent. Yeah, it is, it is somehow 75%, which is okay, you know. I I do not think like that I'm just willing to go through these rules just just really, really fast, because I know if I'm just going through them too fast that uh, I'm just missing out a lot of things and I don't say a lot of things that I could have said and at the end it's not as much value or I'm subconsciously or accidentally also quite... Um, I'm accidentally not providing as much value as I could which is fucked up and which is something I do not like to do and do not like to be like, you know, or do not let it just like to be like it. Um, but yeah, 
So this is it with the episode. I do hope that you have liked it. I hope that um, you got something out of it. And yeah, with this being said, I hope you get the best health, wealth, happiness and success. But still, remember how you're going to be remembered, which means that you maybe give back to the world. So helping people, you know, think about your uh, chemicals, like your endorphins. I fucking just missed it. <laughs> I forgot it. I really forgot it. Yeah, never mind. Uh, just give back to the people, even though they might haven't given you something in return or just before it. Just help them. And yeah, with that being said, I wish you the best and I'll see you tomorrow.